Okay, so we've talked about the, the physics of getting things into space, and it's not easy. No. Um, but of course, any real practical, there are more practical issues, in particular money. Yes. So let's talk about what it's really like to put something into space. Where does the money go? Yeah, because this is the sort of thing that I think we have lots of ideas, and you say, can we do this, or why is it so expensive? And it's because there's a lot of complicated stuff you have to deal with. And what you can do or what you can't do, and this is something we'll keep repeatedly coming back to in this section of the course, is the money of it. Now, we broadly talked about a few things in the, in the physics, and we can kind of summarize of where do we want to go. We talked a lot about orbits, and that orbit just is not what is that satellite going to do, but how much energy do we need to get there, um, how are we going to communicate with it, how we can control it. That then relates to how big is a thing going to be? Now, you can make something really small, but if it doesn't do the purpose of the satellite, then kind of pointless. Conversely, I can make a really cool big space telescope, but if it's going to not be practical to put in the space, it's not going to go anywhere. So weight, surprisingly, is a very important thing. And purpose. Now, this, again, it seems kind of sensible, but depending on what you build or what you do will determine what it is you build or what you do. And it's so it's not this idea that we just throw up a satellite and it does everything. Satellites have very clear purposes because this depends on how they're built, what the design is, what energy it needs, what orbit it is. And something else we often don't consider is how long does it need to be up there? Right? When the space shuttle uh, was designed and therefore the, space the Hubble Space Telescope, they wanted it to be up there for as long as possible, right, Paul? That's right. I mean, this purpose thing always drives me crazy. It's the top trump mentality in you know, yes. these games where, where my kids always play, you know, what's the best tank? What's the best car? I mean, there's no such thing as what's the best spacecraft? Yeah, there, there's, there's no such thing as the best car. I mean, uh, there'll be the very fast car for driving down a racetrack and the four wheel drive and then the family car with seats in the back. And they all <laughs> serve different purposes for different things. And it's the same for spacecraft. It's a it horses is. for courses, um, a spacecraft that's looking into spy is supposed to communicate and there's many different ways of doing all these things so you have to think about what you're trying to do and what weight do you need to do it what orbit do you need to do it and how long does it need to last in space to make it cost effective to do it because some may only need to be up there for a few years and that will dramatically change what you do others you want it to be there as long as possible and sometimes if it's already going to be complicated again like building the hubble space telescope it's, it's a very complicated thing to build so you don't want to build something that's only going to last for three years you're not going to be able to spend billions of dollars every time, so you have to build something that's going to last for as long as possible. And so what this actually means is the economies that we have to look at, the economics, and this is going to be something that is a very strong theme in this part of the section. And there's far, kind of four broad ways we can look at it. The research that goes into this, and we'll focus a lot to the rest of this course on what we do in space and why. And I think we can understand that. But there's also the research that goes in building the equipment. We don't just have new technology that just evaporates out of anywhere. There are people that have to design and build and test and look at it. That's a lot of what space research is, right, Paul? And you have to pay them. And you have to pay them. They don't work for free, unfortunately. <laughs> then you actually have to develop and test it. Nothing works the first time. You know, there, there's always this uh, idea that you know, people say, oh, we got to the moon in the 60s and 70s. Why can't we just build a new rocket and go there? Well, we know how to build a car. You don't just build a new car and take it on the road. You have to do a little bit of testing. And I don't think any new car has ever worked the first time out. Or well, the first hundred times out. Or the first hundred times out. That's right. Space is no different. And also how efficient it is. You could do lots of great ideas, but if they're not going to be that successful or the way you're spending the money is not efficiently used, you're probably not going to be able to do it. And another thing that is now becoming a big theme in space, and that is reusability, because reusability drives down cost. And cost ends up being the name of the game of space that we're going to explore right now. As well as being better for the environment. And better for the environment, that's right. <laughs>